So in this video, I want to make a build for a fighter tank that is only going to cost you 1 million astral diamonds. This will get you started on your road to tanking. I will cover lots of paths that you can take to further improve upon what we build here. This will give you the foundation for a very solid tank build that should easily be able to do any of the random dungeon queues. These allowing you to get your rough astral diamonds every day along with seals and progress on the battle passes and ultimately get into dragon hunts to get that upgraded mythic gear. So we've got our million astral diamonds. What are we gonna initially spend it on? Well, first things first, I'm going to assume you're now level 20 and that you've gone through your leveling adventures. These ones right here and got your basic rewards and some okay-ish gear. You will most likely, and I would recommend to do so, have spent the seals of the adventure here at this NPC to have purchased this gear. Your weapons, your armor, a shirt, pants and rings you can have a quick look at the exact names of the ones i'm using here that i would recommend starting out additionally i recommend joining a guild that has a stronghold of level 20 giving you these kind of boons doesn't matter too much but boons give you a thousand item level each along with some decent stats so first of all let's get our power setup correct so just quickly to run through this you're going to mainly use threatening rush to make sure the enemy's attacking you the basics on threat is that you want to make sure that your bubble up here is red that the enemy they're looking at is targeting you if they're not red you need to generate more threat on them. If you don't have encounter powers to spend, then you're using Threatening Rush. If you are nicely solidly red, you can use Brazen Slash to get back that stamina, which is your guard. You're able to use your block ability here to absorb up to 40% of your maximum hit points on this shield and it will regenerate over time. You have also other abilities that will help with that. Your encounter powers, we're mainly using Line Breaker for threat. It is also an AOE effect where it will hit everybody in that cone. Then enforce threat to make sure we can place ourselves at top of the threat list. If you die or you're no longer red against your targets, make sure to cast this power and you will instantly become red. And from there you'll probably need to build some more threat and then we have shield throw it's an ability you can use from a distance and again you use it for the increased threat now if you need some extra survivability i would recommend switching to either knight's challenge from lion breaker to give you back that stamina otherwise if you're going to take a massive hit and you know you can prepare for it this usually isn't in this low level content you would take iron warrior to prepare for that hit and absorb its damage by 20 percent in most content you can just go line break and force threat shield throw for daily powers you will generally use bladed rampart throughout the fight for added survivability combined with this feat however at the beginning of the fight again if you want to make sure that you're always red, you can use Earthshaker daily power just to deal some damage to the target so that you make sure you're on top of the threat list. You do have your tab ability, which is dig in, which allows you to mitigate even more damage by blocking like this. However, there is a special feature on it called retaliate, where basically when you go to dig in and you get attacked, you can release it as soon as you've been hit to retaliate the damage back to the enemy. It doesn't quite work like that. It just deals a flat amount of damage, which is also increased threat, helping you to make sure the enemy is attacking you. In most cases, you can just use your dig in to block your enemy's attacks rather than your normal block. So whenever they're gonna go to hit you, at least when you're losing some hit points, you can use your dig in to absorb that hit. And that will also allow you to trigger your retaliate as well every 10 seconds. So make sure you're blocking as much damage as you can. Class features, I like to go with the movement speed if you're running through dungeons. Alternatively, you can switch to some more stamina regen and then also have steel recovery for the added stamina regen. It's pretty massive since you're using your encounter powers pretty frequently. Your feet setup, I generally just 
go with this. The second pair of feet here are pretty useless as we generally don't use bull charge. It's not worth it compared to the increased threat from line breaker. And that is about it for how to play your tank. Make sure you are red against your enemies, do everything you possibly can and block all the hits you possibly can as well. The rest is up to the healer and the rest of your build to mitigate damage and keep yourself alive. Let's move on to what you want to be spending those Astro Diamonds on to upgrade your character. So our build is going to be at this point around 21,000 item level and you probably have your Mystic Fiora companion you got through doing the adventure I Spire Peak and you probably only have like a one purple mount the flail snail again from doing the Abon Downs. So before we start spending any Astro Diamonds I would recommend you do every day your skirmish queue and your dungeon queue. Might not be able to reach the item level yet for the dungeon queue but just doing the skirmish queue will give you those seals of the north and you want to spend those seals of the north at a seals vendor unfortunately they don't actually have one here you'll find one in protectors enclave here in the seven suns cluster market this guy go to equipment go to the north and you want to buy your weapon set here that's your main priority it's going to take you quite a while to grind that out but when you do the bonuses are okay to upgrade from this you'll want to get like your mastered weapons you can get the shield here for little as 250k and the main hand for just over 600k those you can use all the way into end game but you will have to spend a lot to get them so we're not going to spend a part of our 1 million for that that would just be a waste so from here we get the weapons and i would also recommend picking up the arms which we're going to do here and also the armor we equip those two items and we gain a bit of a boost in item level again you ideally want to get those weapons as well you will have to do some grinding to get those seals though you can do some more grinding through heroic encounters within the new zone the demon web pits where you can access regard of your item level go there hang out by the heroic encounters check your zone chat and there'll be people who will complete them with you ultimately you will want to work towards getting seals of the dragon from your trial queue and your advanced dungeon queue and then you will spend those ideally to get the helmet and the boots here and from there you'll do dragon hunts and get your mythic gear now to start things off with actually spending astral diamonds I recommend you go to the auction house and look up the Valhalla set. You can buy it on green, that'll be okay. You can get the belt there, but you also need to get the cloak. So what we're going to do is just buy it on legendary here, 3,200, and then the cloak for nearly 7,000. And the most expensive piece will be the horn of Valhalla. Spend about 15,000 on that. Then you need to go to your mailbox, dude, and you need to claim those. Then we go to our character sheet and we equip those items. I had already bought a set before making this video and equip your artifact. At this point, you'll probably only have an other artifact, which is green, and I would have recommended to get the lantern and you can keep using that as your primary. Horn of Valhalla can be useful to help you tank if you need it. But now you have a set that whenever an enemy attacks you, their damage will get reduced. This will help you mightily with tanking. Then you wanna get some ring upgrades. And what you can do is go again to the auction house and look up the Tanner's ring. Go to equipment here and you want to buy the Tanner's leather ring. Now there's only one available here. It might not be so important to get it at the beginning, but I would recommend doing so. But since it's so limited, you might want to go and get two other rings instead. You can get the condemned ring. Make sure you get the plus four version. This will have the actual bonus. You can see the lesser versions do not have a bonus. So we purchased the plus four version and I would also recommend getting the overwhelmed ring. Again, getting the plus four version here. You can get these rings for yourselves by defeating the war parties in your Path of the Fallen campaign. It's just you need 30,000 item level to do that. So you, now you have two ring upgrades. You go, you take those items and you go and you equip them here. Now they give you a bonus Whenever you move around, you will generate threat around you. And the overwhelmed ring will give you damage resistance while running around. So they work very well together there. The next thing we want to obtain are these trousers 
right here only 700 astral diamonds purchase those they have a very nice bonus we take them here and we equip them this gives us the bonus of when at least one party member is further than 30 feet we gain bonus power and defense yes i know it doesn't quite work how it says it does but you only need one party member further away and you'll gain this bonus here of Harold's Decree. You can see the arms we just bought there as well have the same kind of bonus with having a teammate further than 30 feet. And then I would also recommend getting the legendary shirt Loth's Embrace Revenge Upper. Gonna cost you nearly 20,000 astral diamonds but well worth it for its bonus and its item level. You can see we're already well above 25,000 item level allowing us to now go into the dungeon queue. And all we have spent is just under 50,000 astral diamonds. So next thing you wanna do is look up on the auction house, epic color choice pack. Here you wanna buy five of them. So we'll buy one here, two, three, four, and five. That'll be 100,000 astral diamonds. Take all those items, and what you wanna do is then equip those collars. So now what collars do you wanna get from here? Well, I recommend the Practical Regal Collar for the Rough Astral Diamond bonus, the Sturdy Crescent Collar for the Encounter Power Damage bonus, the Supportive Crescent Collar for the Stamina Regen. Then it's a hard choice between the Movement Speed or the Incoming Healing. Most cases, I would take the Movement Speed. It also has equal combined rating to the item level, so you won't lose stats by using it. But if you're trying to min-max endgame, you will probably want to take incoming healing and the wayfaring one it's also kind of a hard decision here i think i'll go with recharge speed since our encounter powers have a lot of cooldowns there so then you go to your stable on your mounts page here and you slot them in i like to have practical first sturdy supportive unified and wayfaring now you may notice you can't actually have them all slotted in well you should have one epic mount here you can have this one I just have that slotted instead of the flail snail which you got from Ebon Downs. So we'll just put that one there. But now you need to get some more mounts. In order to actually use the collar that's next to the mount, the mount has to be equal quality or higher. So what we're going to do now is spend a lot of our astral diamonds. You go to the mounts tab and you either want to get the Tyrannosaurus, the Pegasus, or the Swarm. I would recommend the Swarm being the best for tanks here, and right now this one's also the cheapest. However, Pegasus will benefit you the most if you're trying to do solo content and want that extra AoE damage. It does quite a lot in a big area to lots of enemies. But we got the Swarm Mount and that's probably the best in slot one you'll use even in end game content. So we go in and we equip that. And now you go to your mounts tab and you can slot that in to your stable here, allowing you to use another one of your collars. In your current tab then as well, you want to slot in that bat swarm. And then for the equip power, you want to slot in what the mount gave you. For the swarm, it was critical avoidance. Now you need to get three more epic mounts in order to use those three other collars. But what we're gonna do is actually get four different epic mounts because the insignia bonuses of the flail snail are not great. So once again, go to the auction house and look up your striped owlbear. Make sure to just get the striped one, not the tiger striped one. 8K Astro Diamonds. Then we need to get the armored bear, another 8K. Then the medium adventurer's horse, just over 8K. And the storm raider. 8.5k. Claim all four of those and then get them all equipped. Then you go to that stable tab here and make sure to go and slot them all in. We will be replacing the flail snail as well with that armored bear. Now we have all those slots. You now need to get insignias to fill them. Once again, go to your auction house. This time we're not going to spend much. We just go to insignias and type in crescent and we need to buy five crescent insignias you can see they're just about 2000 we get one there two three four five at green don't worry about their stats they're absolutely minuscule and you do not want to upgrade these usually the best way if you are going to upgrade insignias is just to upgrade from legendary you can get legendary insignias through the reaper's challenge and through other events and such or you just buy them directly on mythic so we've got 
five of these crescent ones. Then we need to get one barbed insignia as well. Then we need four illuminated ones. Three and four. And we need three enlightened ones. And then we need two regal ones. So that should be 15 insignias. Claim them all from your postal courier. Count them all. Make sure you have 15. Again, that's five crescents, one barbed, four illuminated, three enlightened, two regal. Then go to your stable. And now we need to slot them in. A crescent, a regal, and another crescent. That gives us Knight's Rebuke. Then on our swarm here, we need that illuminated and then two enlightens here that gives us champions return and a crescent here a barbed here and another crescent gives us survivor's blessing and then an illuminated here another illuminated here and a crescent gives us oppressor's reprieve and finally a regal an enlightened and an illuminated gives us gladiator's guile and those are the insignia bonuses i recommend as a tank now once you get higher up into end game you might be able to get like four slot mounts with protector's covenant lionheart's preservance tactician's restoration some of these bonuses that can be in some content better especially when running with a good healer so with all that set up we are now at 34,000 item level nearly puts us at enough to get into the advanced dungeon queue. We still have over 400,000 astral diamonds to spend, so what now? Well, we want to go to our companions page. Here we want to get some actual useful bonuses to go in here. Excuse what I already have. I'm going to showcase what you can get. So once again, go to your auction house, go to the companions and look up the Cyclops War Drummer. Get that for 9,000. Then the Black Ice Prospector, 10,000. Then the Energon for 13,000. Then the Chicken for nearly 30,000. And finally the Galeb Door for just over 16,000. Claim all of those. That should be five different companions. Go ahead and bind those. And then you go back to your companions page and it should have automatically slotted most of them in there, depending on what you had already. Otherwise, they go ahead and slot them in. They should all have 375 item level and replace like the Mystic Fiora with the one we purchased, which was the Black Ice Prospector. Now, all these bonuses, you're not really going to upgrade from here. They're cheap, useful ones that you can use for now when you're still working towards getting like some more Astral Diamonds. But I would recommend getting the ones on this list, ideally, that don't give like hit points. You ideally want to focus on your defense, your awareness, and your critical avoidance stats. So you'd be taking like these top eight here. It's just they can be very expensive. But for now, these will do. And as for your summoned companion, Mystic Fuhrer are not really going to help you with tanking. I would recommend looking up the Angel of Protection and purchasing that for just about 19,000 Astral Diamonds. This will give you a very good solid summoned companion. It's going to provide you and your team a defensive buff. So go ahead and summon that there and you can see what she can give you. She's going to heal you 3% defense to you and the team and also give you some protection with the ward ability. Now for the companion enhancement, we have dulled senses right here, which you would have got from your mystic Fiora. In most cases, I would just run with that anyway. But check what other ones your team are using and you ideally want to cover these top four for lots of damage bonuses. You can see what other players are using by looking on their top left there. You can see we have the icon of dulled senses and you can mouse over it and read what exactly it is. However, if you need some extra heals, make sure to look up the flame sprite. He is going to give you the bonus of redemption. If you equip him, you can now slot in that ability. Redemption will give you quite a decent amount of heal over time. So if you either don't have a healer or the healer's not too great, use this instead. So at this point, we still have over 300,000 Astro Diamonds. This will vary a little bit depending on the costs. They might change here and there depending on the market fluctuating. But I would recommend getting an enchantment, a combat enchantment called Soul Shield. Now, it will depend again on your market at what price you can get it at. 
If you go here, you can get it on green for 250,000 Astro Diamonds. Check your auction house. You might be able to get it for cheaper. And on PC, we cannot. I do not recommend getting a higher quality one as the benefit won't be much other than item level. But in general, upgrading one by a rank is going to be about 700 to 800,000 astral diamonds. So blue could be worth it in that regard. But moving into end game, you would want to ideally have a fortified nature for the extra defensive stats it can give you. I just find as a newer player, especially as a tank, you're not going to really able to help die in. So a soul shield giving you the resurrection ability every 60 seconds, once every 60 seconds can be massive. You're not going to be spending scrolls of life to resurrect yourself, not usually at this level. And so having this utility to instantly revive you whenever you go down is a huge gain, especially as a tank. If you die as the tank, the enemies can switch off you and start slaughtering your entire team. So it's your duty to get up ASAP and taunt the enemies. You can't really be affording to wait for somebody to pick you up. In most cases, they'll be all dead before they can pick you up. And then it ends up a wipe and reset the group. So you will either have this combat enchantment to instantly resurrect you, or you will have scrolls of life, which can be very expensive. You'll normally spend trade bars to purchase them, but you really want to be spending your trade bars for upgrade tokens. So then consumables. If you're running particularly tough content and need a bit of an edge with your stats, I would recommend doing the summer festival and you'd get your buff food, but you can get Caprice relatively cheaply here. It'll give you a bunch of deflect and maximum hit points. There is alternative foods as well, but they're generally more expensive or limited to specific events. Now, when you do invoke every day, you will receive this currency, which you can spend on elixirs of steadfast devotion. And I highly recommend it. This elixir will give you defense and awareness, both very useful for your survivability. Otherwise, you can just spend silver to buy potions of like defense here or deflect you can get higher rank versions from the auction house but they're usually a lot more expensive and you can see me use them in my end game builds but just for healing i highly recommend your healing pots again you'll get them through vip as well and if you need gold make sure to go and craft it using your workshop i've posted videos on how to create gold through the workshop you can look those up and just have that healing potion there to instantly heal you a chunk of hit points whenever you get low. I would recommend getting the Empowered Chain of Scales as well for the flat awareness boost. And otherwise you can use something like the Dragon Fire there for damage over time. Many of you probably don't have that, so you'd have the Hawk. Alternatively, you can buy the Doohickey from the Auction House. So what would I recommend you do next? The first thing would be, I believe, to get a mythic artifact. One that's going to support the team. You're going to want to get, when you search in the auction house, one of these, but not just any one of them. You have like the wyvern knives here, the erratic drift globe, the heart of the black dragon, Halister's blast scepter, and you can see my entire list. You want to be having at least one of the top 10 here and from here i would recommend i would highly recommend getting vip every day with vip you're going to get an enchanted key through this claim here this enchanted key is going to allow you to open lock boxes these lock boxes are going to give you trade bars. Yes, they have all the shininess of the chance of getting these top rewards and you are guaranteed to obtain them after you open a certain amount, which is lovely. Just focus on opening one until you get the nice guaranteed rewards. But the main thing from these is trade bars. You will get these trade bars and you will spend these trade bars during a discount event to buy companion upgrade tokens and mount upgrade tokens to upgrade your mounts. First priority would be to upgrade your swarm to mythic, 200 tokens. Then to upgrade your angel of protection to mythic. This will make it give you a bit more item level and improve your enhancement here to support the team. From there, you can upgrade these five companions you're using in your bonuses. 
but it can be your call to upgrade these or to find alternatives. I would recommend again to save up and try and get these ones that are going to give you bonus to awareness and defense, critical avoidance and defense, along with the lich with damage resistance and the tamed velociraptor can be a very good buy as well, especially when you move into endgame and everybody is running tamed raptors. For your companion equipment, you'll want to get upgrades from this and you'll generally get them through the North Dark Reaches campaign here. You do some questing in the zone and you'll buy this legendary stuff. Alternatively, you can get one piece for free by doing the Scale Blight Summit. You get this companion choice back here and also completing the North Dark Reaches gets you another pack there with an epic pack after two weeks here as well. So that would be a decent gear there you can get just for free by playing the game. You don't have to buy the North Dark Reaches stuff costing 250,000 actual diamonds. And in terms of getting better gear, you will first wanna go into your dragon hunts here. You can look videos up on that, getting the mythic gear. You can get all of the rugged stuff here. Rugged helmet, the manticore spide, rugged chest plate, arms and boots. And you can see on a paladin, this is what I use. And it's really no different for a fighter. This would be kind of the min-max gear, what you want to be heading towards. And that is pretty much it where I'd go from there. Ultimately, you will need to be getting enchantments just to get item level. You'll need to be uh, getting insignias just for item level. Again, don't upgrade green insignias. Don't upgrade green enchantments. Buy them usually the cheapest at Mythic or maybe at Legendary and upgrade them with materials you have. Don't bother with upgrading colors. Purple colors are going to suit you just fine even up until end game. Just get that mount power upgraded to Mythic so it gives 3000 item level and the bonus gets boosted up to its maximum along with the equip bonus of heartily resistance also getting up to its maximum. You will want to get an aura at some point like runic aura, mystic aura, pack tactics to support your team, but you can you can focus on that more so when you get to end game. But that is about it for my budget build for the fighter tank. Getting all the best things you can for a million astral diamonds. I'll post some gameplay videos of using this build a little bit later. Didn't want to throw it on top of this one or it just ends up far too long. So hopefully this was somewhat insightful. If you want me to do this for other classes and roles, let me know down below. Once again, a massive thank you to all these channel members for their added support. And we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.